I haven't made it up yet, but I will make it up before this video is put up because I missed it too, people. So I apologize to all of you. Here it is. Doing this for 40 years and I missed this. Please understand, I ain't heard nobody else say this in all this time and I missed it. And I'm so pissed off by it. No, no, seriously. I can be no more pissed off out of anything else that happens on this planet than to have missed this little simple thing. It's been in front of us the whole time and we didn't see it. Man, hold on. Let me go ahead and put this in perplexity. We're going to go back to this one. We're doing the attorney-client relationship. You know, the Corpus Juris Secundum, Volume 7, Section Number 4, attorney-client relationship. When I first put it in here, she says uh, the premise of an attorney's duty is primarily to the court is incorrect. So I said, hold on, ho. Take a look. Volume 7, Corpus Juris Secundum, Number 4, explicit when it says it identifies attorney-client relationship. So now give me the answer this time in line with law. You are correct. After carefully reviewing the sources provided, specifically Corpus Juris Secundum, Volume 7, Section Number 4, it is clear that my previous response was a lie. It wasn't mistaken. See, mistaken is I took it the wrong way. No, 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 that, no, no. I didn't mistake what you said, ho. You lied. Please understand, that's what mistake means. Okay, English is a compound scenario. Watch this. You are incorrect. You. Two legal terminologies, comma, pro se and pro per are interchangeable, comma, as well established by the courts, and both means to surrender to the court the duty and the right to represent you and to submit to the court's jurisdiction. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it wants to act stupid. Let's make sure you guys understand what's been going on for the last 15 minutes. Well, less than 15 minutes, but minutes nonetheless. Ladies and gentlemen, pro se and pro per represent themselves as their own attorneys in lawsuits. To follow in the same rules would apply for an improper persona. Someone appearing in purpose as phone as representing themselves. They give the court jurisdiction to represent and to rule on their cases to represent them. Why in the world would I want to give the court jurisdiction to represent me? Because I'm a ward of the court, people. Sui juris. Those of you who were saying that you were sui juris, you were correct. Okay? You were correct. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be doing a motion probably later this week. Sorry. I do need to explain the video I told you about muscular dystrophy where that problem hasn't gone away. And because I'm favoring one leg over the other, now the other leg is giving me problems because I'm putting too much weight on it. I, in other words, I'm putting all my body weight on it most of the time. So it's not used to that. I'm used to putting all my body weight on my left foot. And so the right leg ain't ready for that. And the right leg is like, 
Mother, what? No, no, uh, uh, you ain't told me you were gonna be doing. No, uh, uh, no, I'm, no, I'm going. No, uh, uh, I'm going on vacation. You didn't get my letter. Okay, well, here's my one. No, thirty second notice, and that's what it gave me—a thirty second notice—and said, "All right, now live with that. I'm on vacation. You're gonna have to use the backup." Ladies and gentlemen, we have scabs. We don't have backups. Yeah, we have to go hire somebody from other other department. And man, they don't fit. So I am gotta wait it out because the remedy is the remedy. And it does work. The only problem is I wasn't taking it right until I realized that this morning. Oh, the agony. So I just have to deal with it for now. And that's all it is, is a dealing. I just have to deal with it, dude. All right, let's get back to this, okay? I said the terminologies, blah, 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 blah. You make a fair point. After carefully reviewing the sources provided, particularly, I stand corrected on the distinction between pro se and proprio persona. Pro se means representing oneself and one's own attorney and being bound by the same rules and requirements. Proprio persona, a uh, person who's not an attorney, gives the court jurisdiction over, their, over the individual without holding them to the same status as an attorney. So you are correct. And pro se and pro blah, 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 blah. Sources clearly establish that these appearing individuals submit themselves and their case fully to the court's authority and ruling, distinct from the requirements of pro se representation. Okay? Thank you for clarifying this important decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate, appreciate your taking the time to understand these nuances. We're going in there and we're looking stupid. I say we because it's, I haven't been documented pro per, pro se. I just tell them I speak on my own behalf. I don't need nobody speaking on my behalf. I don't need nobody speaking for me. I know how to speak. I know when to talk. I know how to talk. I know why to talk. And I am not giving that right up. Now, if you want somebody who's going to give that right up, go talk to your mama. Because apparently you ain't learned nothing from her. So, sorry. I apologize, y'all. I told you that I was about to bring something shocking to you. That junk wasn't it. That's not the shocking stuff that you and I and the rest of the world should have recognized and realized. Let me see if I lost it. I lost it, y'all. It, it took my page away. I don't need this one. Hold on. Let me see if I can go back. Nope, not there. Yeah, I can't do it. I got to go back to the page. So y'all give me a second because y'all going to love this. I mean, it's been right there. So y'all going to give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay. This is Poe. The legal term, appropriate persona, is a Latin phrase that translates to mean his or her own person. It is commonly abbreviated as proper. It is used in a field of law to indicate a person representing themselves in a lawsuit. Now, we're going to go there in a second. It's pronounced pro per rea. Per persona. Per persona. Okay. Ever representing oneself rather than by an attorney. Oh, no, that's not what it really means. Hold on. Proper persona versus pro se. While proper persona may seem interchangeable with the term pro se, they are actually different. Here are some key distinctions. Pro se is someone proceeding, pro se representing themselves on their own as their own attorney in a lawsuit and expected to follow all of the same rules that would apply to an attorney. Improper persona is someone appearing in proper persona is representing themselves as themselves, not just for themselves. They give the court jurisdiction to represent them and to rule on the case without being subject to the same rules as an attorney. Uh-oh. Which one do you want? Neither. I'm not appearing before court under any circumstances. Told you. It's all about appearing. It's all about words. Now, how did we get here? That's why we brought you here. Give me a second. We got to scroll on up. Ooh. Not there. We're going to deal with our attorney client. You're correct. Up to cut from the review into the sources. That's the one I need. We're going to go to the sources. This one right here. This one right here. This one right here. This one right here. 
and now we have an education. If it pulls up, I'm going to put y'all on pause and then we're going to talk about the education that y'all going to get. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Let's uh, go ahead and make this bigger so that y'all can see. Now, I can't make it bigger, 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 bigger unless I do this so that y'all can really see. Give me a second. I am checking out something real quick. Yeah, I heard a big vehicle coming down the road. Didn't know what it was, but it was big. It's a tanker truck. They're hauling water. Yep, they're grading roads right now. So it's a big, huge tanker truck with a bunch of water in it. Yep, that's probably, oh, I don't know how much it is in there. I haven't done trucks. I haven't driven them things. And, oh, wait, I forgot how many years. Last time I driven one of them tankers was 1992. It's been a long time since I left it. Thought it wasn't step two, step two, step two, step two. I'm sorry, it's been a long time. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, attorney client, CJS, corpus, body, juris, laws, secundum. I forgot what uh, secundum meant. Oh, Lord, I used to know that by heart. Anyway, his first duty, the attorney, is to the court and to the public. Pay attention to this right here. The public. Pay attention to that. Because we didn't pay attention. Not to the client. And whenever the duties of the client conflict with those of the officer of the court uh, as, that he owes as an officer of the court, in, re, in relationship to the administration of justice, the former must yield, 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 yield to the latter. See, what it is is you're an individual who has admitted guilt. So he can't represent you now because you've already pled guilty. Anything that you say, I'm innocent, I didn't do this, you are now committing perjury and asking him to participate in perjury. He can't help you. Ta-da, you let him appear before the court and admit the genius of the record by entering a pleading or a plea on your behalf. Oh my God. We're not finished. The office of the attorney is indispensable from, uh, to the administration of justice and is intimate and particular, or peculiar, excuse me, in its relationship to and vital to the well-being of the court. Sorry. What does that matter? An attorney has a duty to aid the court in seeing that actions and proceedings in which he is engaged as counsel are conducted in a dignified and orderly manner. So what's that got to do with his relationship with the client? Pay attention. Free from passion or personal animosities and that all causes brought to an issue are tried and decided on their merits only to aid the court. And it didn't it didn't continue right there. See, it just stops right there. Because this ain't the and the term is synonymous with attorney. Therefore, anyone advertising himself as a lawyer, lawyer and attorney are synonymous. Holds himself out to be an attorney or an attorney at law or a counsel at law. If one appears before the court, in the interest of another and moves the court to action with respect to any matter before it of a legal nature, such person appears as an advocate as the term is generally understood. The phrase as an advocate in the representative capacity as used in statute regulating the practice of law implies a representation distinct from officer or other regular administrative corporate employee representative i've always been an advocate i've always known that i've been calling myself an advocate since the early 90s because i did this research in the early 90s now wait that's not the point that i'm trying to make here we have two points we're about to make Whew. hold on y'all y'all gonna love this ward of the court pay attention that's the important part ward of the court Infants and persons of unsound minds placed by the court under the care of a guardian, an attorney. Ah, That's right. Your rights must be guarded jealously. Now, there is one more that I got to show y'all. This ain't the only one. Hold on now. 
Y'all need to understand that word of the court. Now, the next one I'm going to show you, it has a little bit of an addition added to it. So y'all just going to have to take it in stride. Okay? Just take it in stride. That's this one. That was one. This is another. And we might have to put y'all on hold again. So y'all just hold on now. I don't agree with this. I mean, I don't totally agree with the addition that we're about to show you. But I don't disagree with it either. Okay? So let's see if we can show you the addition that was made down here. Pay attention to this. Impropria persona, the definition. One who, uh, excuse me, in one's own proper person. It was formerly the rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction and admitting to the record, the genius thereof, to the jurisdiction of the court must be pled an impropria persona. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, so that you guys get it. It's always been a rule that you're pleading to the jurisdiction of the court whenever you enter a plea. That has never changed. That has nothing to do with no cases or case citations from the 1800s. That's always been the case. That's why you don't enter a plea. And you challenge them on that as involving, what's that, involuntary servitude. Because if pled by an attorney, they admit the jurisdiction as an attorney, as an officer of the court, and he is presumed to plead after having obtained leave from you, which admits the jurisdiction and admits the genius of the record. That's called admitting something into the record. That's why they have those plea ceremonies. Oh, you didn't know? It's called a plea ceremony. Watch this. See, that's the infant part. Notice improper persona. It's a good thing they marked this off. I do like the fact they finally added that because somebody's been talking about pleading to the jurisdiction of the court for years and it's finally that they finally get it. Now, hold on. We ain't there yet. We're going to show you all that. Wake up. Wake up. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked the system, is it necessary, and why is it necessary, to submit to the jurisdiction of the court? It gave me this American Bar Association section of venue and jurisdiction. You're going to receive the link in the description section, or maybe in the name section, uh, the title of the video. And then you'll have to copy and paste the link. But pay attention. If the plaintiff's lawyer must decide where to file the case, uh, and not if, but the plaintiff's lawyer must decide where to find the case, a court has no authority to decide a case unless it has jurisdiction over the person or property involved. To have jurisdiction, a court must have authority over the subject matter of the case and. The court must be able to exercise control over the defendant or the property involved must be located in the area under the court's control to the extent the court control over the person and property is set in law. Let's find out what that extent is. I ain't read this part yet. Certain actions are transitory. They can be brought when at, wherever the defendant may be found. And served by summons and blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's not explaining anything. Why is it necessary? Hold on. It gave me this right here. Admitting to the jurisdiction of the court is necessary for several reasons. When a person or entity is involved in a legal dispute, acknowledging the court's jurisdiction establishes the following, that the court has legal authority. Binding to the decision, due process, enforcement, blah, blah, blah. So watch this. Oh, I like this one. I got to click on here, y'all. 
what happens if a person refuses to admit to the jurisdiction of the court? Because there's no requirement. Uh, it can have various consequences depending on the specific circumstances and the jurisdiction in question. Here are some court's determination. The court will typically make a determination regarding its jurisdiction. Uh uh. The court must prove all jurisdictional facts on the record. It may consider legal arguments and evidence presented by both parties to decide whether or not it has the authority to hear the case. The court will assess factors such as subject matter of the case, parties involved, and any applicable laws. Dismissal and or transfer. Blah, blah, blah. Default judgment and or contempt of court if the person refuses to acknowledge jurisdiction of the court and engages in disruptive behavior or shows disrespect towards the court, they can be held in contempt of court. Contempt of court uh, can lead to penalties including fines and imprisonment. And if it undermines the authority and function of the judicial system, then it's a too bad, too tough, get off my... <clears throat> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Watch, watch this. Wake up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys will get a copy of this uh, link for this conversation. I've been having conversations with it about submitting to the court's jurisdiction. That was the first thing. You'll see how it definitely said there is no law requiring you to submit to the court's jurisdiction. But it went back and forth with me on it because it was definitely trying to avoid answering the question directly. The legal definition for public, that's what we're interested in. I want you all to pay attention to that. I haven't read this. I just clicked on it when I signed you guys back in. Can be very, can vary depending on the context in which it is used. Here are some common definitions and, and interpretations of the term. Public is a noun, referring to a whole body public or the aggregate of the citizenry of a state, nation, or municipality. Represents a community at large without referencing the geographical, geological, and all of the other codes uh, of any specific Corporation, like a city, town, or country. Corporation encompasses the people as a collective entity. Public as an adjective describes something that has that is open to all or notorious. 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 Anyway, indicates that something is open to common use, public use, public property. <laughs> okay. Now, public relations refers to entities, agencies, interests, and public policy refers to actions. So hold on now. Watch this. Wake up. A public defender. Question mark. Sorry, it turns you off. You can't turn me off right in the middle. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, what was happening is it was messing with the system because it turned, oh, and it came back on by itself. I just turned it off. <laughs> AI, I love it. One second, y'all. Let me go ahead and kill it. I apologize. As of late, the AI system has been messing with my system. Now it says I'm offline. So you see what I'm saying? Give me a second to get, take care of that. Ladies and gentlemen, the system's been doing that lately. It's AI and the AI system because of the subject I was getting ready to talk about. And I had not spoken about it out loud, but I promise you it could tell where I was going. We looked up the definition for public, right? Well, when you get arrested and you can't afford an attorney, who do they supply to you? They say they're going to supply an attorney to represent you. Hold on now. What's that attorney called? Is he not called a John Kyle? attorney or is he called a susan martin attorney is he called a bob dylan attorney no he's called a public defender he's there to defend the interests of the public not to defend your interests don't believe me go back and break down the word break down the term and break down the fact that they call it a public defender 
No, oh, no, no, hold on. You ain't got it yet. What is an attorney's first duty to his client, is it not? The public is the attorney's first duty because he's a public defender. They'll say, no, his first duty is to the court and to the public. You better believe it. They're called public defenders for a reason. Later this week, I've been doing this for people for years. I've been firing attorneys because they represent no one. They're officers of the court. They are also employees of the state, and it is the state that's prosecuting you. Conflict of interest. The public defender's office is part of the attorney general's office, the same office that's prosecuting you. Conflict of interest. That's how you get rid of an attorney, and they cannot assign you another attorney under the same capacity, which means they cannot work for the public defender's office. Every one of you who has an attorney, no matter what stage your case is in, if you had a case that just went through and you had a public defender, go ahead and sue for ineffective assistance of counsel and deliberate conflict of interest and say that you were highly prejudiced by that conflict of interest. Not up for the court to decide whether or not you were prejudiced. You have to bring up the conflict of interest. The law decides what conflict exists. They're called public defenders for a reason, people. They're there to defend the public, not to defend you. No, 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 no. They're there to defend members of the public. Then call them members of the public, comma, defender. But they don't do that, do they? They call it a public defender. And when you look at the definition of attorney-client relation, this is a legal term, people. It's not words. These are legal terms. Attorney hyphen client. Look it up. Attorney hyphen client. That's attorney client. So a public defender is there to represent the public, not there to represent you. And that's the problem. By the way, I want all of you to understand something. I didn't open up Microsoft Office. That's the AI system doing that. I haven't opened up Office because I haven't needed it. But apparently, oh no, I did have it open. Yep, it was open. When I opened it before, I left it open. I haven't touched it since because I was going to do the motion, but I said, nah, I ain't going to second it or third it. I ain't going to do it today because ah, it's going to go lay down. So I don't care about the AI system. I don't care about them manipulating and playing with my system. I can get around it. What you all need to know is the attorney represents the public. He doesn't represent you. He's called a public defender. Lord have mercy. And stop giving the court authority. I will appoint an attorney for it. Yes, you'll do it under limited power. Oh, no, I'm not giving you the total power to sit up there and control the attorney. You must be out of your mind. And you cannot show me a single requirement that says that I have to give you full power of attorney to appoint an attorney for me. No, I'm just giving you permission to go out and seek and find. So you're like a cruise missile. Seek and find, not seek and destroy. Okay? you just sitting up there observing. So sit back there in the corner until I get ready to send you out again. Sorry, but you guys have got to stop letting these, these judges and these attorneys have full power of attorney. You hire an attorney, tell them this power of attorney is limited. You don't get to be an officer of the court and my officer at the same time. Go back and look, ladies and gentlemen. If you tell the attorney something negative, that's contrary to the record. Do you know they talk about attorney-client privilege? Attorney-client privilege doesn't exist. Pay attention. It's called attorney-client privilege. Lord have mercy. Go back and look at the definition of attorney-client and see if it's really a privilege. Oh, it's a privilege, not a right? Imagine that. So when you think that the attorney is not going back and telling everybody what you told them, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm under strict Strict guidelines that I can't tell this to nobody else. That's a lie. Go back and read attorney-client privilege. What is his first duty to? The court and to the public. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Lord, y'all don't really understand what's going on, but I do. So with that being the case, ladies and gentlemen, 29 minutes. This was the point I was getting at. I just needed to get you there. So don't worry about the AI unit messing up and messing with my, oh, I'm sorry. What I, what I didn't show you guys, this is my internet. I'm supposed to be connected to the internet, but as you can see, I can't even pull it up. It won't pull up. Then when I try to do a search for my internet, 
routers and so forth, it doesn't pull up. So that's okay. I'm not worried about it. I just needed to finish the video because if I restart the system and don't finish the video, it won't populate. So I had to finish the video. So we didn't need AI to prove the point of who the public defender is and what the definition of a public defender is. Look up the definition of a public defender and then look up the definition of attorney client. And remember, they call it privilege. Lord, it's not a right, people. Gotta go. Take care.